button, which I do right now. Okay, good. Good evening, everybody. My name is Peter Denoy, and um, I am the Sergeant at Arms, and I have the honor of uh, guiding you through the introductions. But I'd like you all to, uh, when I call your name, click on the camera and introduce yourself with who you are, obviously, if you're a Rotarian, and if so, what your position is, or what you do, or which club you're with, and uh, also your location. I am, uh, uh, like I said, the Sergeant at Arms of the uh, um, uh, E Club Rotary, Rotary E Club Canada One, joined on uh, July the 1st, and I spent most of my time in uh, San Juan de la Maguana uh, uh, in the Dominican Republic. and. Um, um, so far, I haven't even planned any trips back to Ho uh, Holland or uh, or Canada. But in June, Iliana and I will be going to Atlanta and uh, attend the the convention, and uh, also go on to Texas, Oklahoma, and visit uh, Rotary friends and other uh, other business associates as well. Um, I'd like to uh, just go down the list for uh, today. So please, Bruce. Could you introduce yourself? My name is Bruce Kleberger. I'm calling from beautiful South Surrey in British Columbia. Well, that was beautiful over there, but he disappeared. So we'll see and wait what happens. Uh, next, Frank Yakumchuk. Are you with us uh, by... Signal 2, awesome. Thank you so much, Peter. You're, uh, you pretty well told us your life story in Rotary. I'm impressed. Anyway, my name's Frank Yakumchuk. I'm the president of the Rotary E-Club of Canada One, at least until June 30th of this year. And uh, like Peter, my wife and I, Tammy, We'll be going to the uh, World Conference in Atlanta, so I encourage anybody, there's, I guess, a last chance to get registered, and I'm looking forward to uh, a good program tonight. Thanks, Ellie and Peter. Thank you, Frank. Uh, Jean-Michel, could you introduce yourself? Yes, uh, I am uh, Jean-Michel Cotin. I am in uh, beautiful Calgary with a plus six. And I'm a, a, a Rotary Foundation Chair for this year. Thank you. Thanks, Jean-Michel. And next, Henri. Henri, can you tell us where you are? Hi, everyone. I don't know. Is my camera working? Not yet. There we go. Uh, my name is Henri McIntosh, and I am in White Rock, British Columbia. And I am in charge of the Imagination Library this year. Thank you, Andre. Um, Barbara and Frank. Frank, are you Barbara or is Barbara Barbara? You're next. <laughs> well, today, today Barbara is Frank. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> is my camera on? Not yet. Click on it. Right, oh. Here we go. Oh, that's a nice eye. Ah, that's something. <laughs> I'm impressed. I'm, I'm on Barbara's. I'm on Barbara's computer. You might have imagined. You might understand. But this is district governor elect or John with one eye. When he becomes <laughs> district governor, he'll have both open. <laughs> well, I, I was going to start with uh, my name is Frank Wrights. I'm a, a member of the Rotary Club of Fort McMurray. And I'm, uh, I'm a visiting member of. Uh, a visiting Rotarian for the, to the Rotary E Club, and I'm also the uh, the governor elect, uh, the governor effective July first. <clears throat> and it's my pleasure to be here tonight. Thank you very much, Frank. Welcome, um, Christiana. Being a Rotarian uh, and uh, also a special guest, could you please introduce yourself? Sure. There I am. <laughs> Hi. Uh, as you can see, my name is Christiana Flesner. I've been a Rotarian, I guess, 15 years now. Past president, district club extension chair, district annual giving major donor, 
stuff like that. I've done assistant governor. So yeah, I was Rotarian first and over time I've became the executive director of the Canadian Wheelchair Foundation. It's a real pleasure to be here. I've always wanted to do this. So I'm looking forward to the meeting. Thank you very much, uh, Christiana. Frank, You're yeah, welcome. thank you. And next is David. Uh, uh, can you show yourself too? Yes, sir. I'm here. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. I've um, I'm been a Rotarian about 24 years, and I was charter member of the Rotary Club. Uh, held most positions over the years in uh, a club level, and currently the uh, treasurer and the membership chair. Thank you. Thanks very much, David. John, our lonely American. Let me see if I can get my camera on here. Yeah, please. There I am. All right. Okay, I'm John Kay, and uh, I'm secretary of this organization. Um, I am located in Blaine, Washington, which is just across the border. Um, usually I have some smart aleck comment to make on the political situation down where I live, <laughs> but I'm so despondent now that I've stopped talking about it at all. Maybe you have reverted to tweeting also now, or what? <laughs> yeah, I get up in the middle of the night, but I... <laughs> Washington time. <laughs> Thanks very much, John. Welcome to uh, the Canadian Club. Undine, can you uh, quickly introduce yourself, and we'll more extensively do that later. Hello, everybody. Thank you for um, inviting me today. Uh, I'm Undine Miller. I am located in, in Chilliwack, beautiful D.C., and I'm looking forward to today's meeting. Thank you very much, Undine. And so far, last but not least, uh, Vicky, how are you tonight? I'm great. Can you see me yet? No? Camera. Camera. Oh, no, camera. It's right there. It's right there. there. Oh, hi. There you go. <laughs> Hello there. I'm Vicki Horsfield. I've been a Rotary member for a year and a half. I live in Guatemala 90% of the time where the sun shines all the time. There are no snowstorms here. And in my house, I say to people, the T word is off limits. So, John, you could try that in your house. <laughs> I don't want that name spoken here. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to hear about it. Thank you very much, Vicky. Okay. Look forward to your, uh, your participation later tonight. Um, so now we'll go to the next uh, part of our program, and that's the induction of, uh, of a new member of Undine. So please, David, Undine, and Frank writes, you turn on your cameras and uh, start the, the program related to the induction of, uh, of Undine. David. Thank you very much, Peter. Just before I start, I realize that I'm omitted to say where I am, and I'm about 20 kilometers west of, of Jean, 20 kilometers west of uh, Calgary and Cochrane, Alberta. So uh, it's my pleasure to. Um, Introduce you to uh, Andini. Um, she's, uh, I've got a bio to uh, read that I'll uh, put up here. Before moving to Canada, Andini apprenticed in the hotel and restaurant industry and kept herself busy with volunteer work for the Girl Scouts and Block Watch and as a radio DJ during her husband's military to career. She has experience as a clerk, typist, real estate agent, translator, beauty advisor, just to name a few. After her family's final move to Chilliwack, and then he became a certified aromatherapist and reflexologist in 1999, while employed as a body worker at the Harrison Hot Springs Resort and Spa, she also provided body treatments at her own little spa in Vedder. And then he was a member of the Chilliwack Rotary Club for five years, but due to other business commitments, had to resign. And then she has also been a member of the director of the Chilliwack Chamber of Commerce for over 10 years. And then enjoys being an active part of her community, is very interested in First Nations history and its impact, 
and cares about lifestyle and well-being overall. Nandini is a proud grandparent to six grandchildren and is ready to become a productive member of Rotary, which is uh, great to hear. I'll pass it over to uh, District Governor-elect uh, Frank. <clears throat> Well, good evening, all, and uh, I do have I do have one question, Undine. Um, what will your classification be? Um, Aroma, aromatherapy. Aromatherapy. Okay. Yes, well, sorry. <laughs> Undine, you have been chosen for membership to the Rotary Club. Thank you so much. E Club Rotary E Club Canada One. Um, <clears throat> because of your standing in your vocation and in the community because of your personal qualities which we believe will make you a very good Rotarian. By joining the Rotary Club, the Rotary E-Club of Canada One today, you will become part of a worldwide organization of business, professional and community leaders who are entitled, who are united in fellowship to provide humanitarian services to encourage high ethical standards in all vocations and to create goodwill and achieve peace throughout the world. You are accepted as a member because we believe you will adopt these high principles of Rotary as your own and that you will do everything in your power to fulfill your membership obligations as these become better known to you. There are of course many obligations of membership and I think you will quickly find that one of the most important of these will be your regular enjoyment of the fellowship of like-minded individuals in a non-competitive and egalitarian atmosphere, not only in this club, but anywhere in the world where Rotarians gather. Your proposer, although maybe not in the room with you, will ultimately present you with your Rotary emblem, which should be worn at all times. This will identify you as a Rotarian and will assure you of a warm welcome in more than 33,000 Rotary clubs in over 200 countries and regions around the world. Your name badge, which also shows your classification, is very important as it signifies the vocation you represent within your club and to which you are an ambassador from Rotary. Rotarian Undina, we expect from you much in the way of fellowship and rotary service and we in turn pledge to do everything in our power to assist you to grow in rotary knowledge. I particularly urge you to, to contact me personally or your club president or your sponsor if you experience any problems in your assimilation into the club or if you believe you possess talents of value to rotary that appear to be overlooked. It is a pleasure that I now extend to you the right hand of Rotary, fellowship, and hearty welcome as a member of the Rotary E-Club of Canada One. Fellow Rotarians, please welcome Rotary's newest member, Rotarian Udini Miller. Welcome. welcome Congratulations. <laughs> And Dean, as secretary, I can guarantee you that you are the only aromatherapist in the club. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Do we have any other aromatherapists in the, dis in the district, Frank? Have you checked that? Do you know if there is any other aromatherapists? I never heard of one. I mean, being a Rotarian. <laughs> well, I'm sure there is one somewhere in the world. Oh, no doubt. Yeah. That's right. And Dean, my uh, uh, my uh, oh, vicious and, we go. and oh, here's that's the real stuff, Frank. <laughs> now we are. Know. There we are. Congratulations and welcome to Rotary. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, and Dean, and. Um, Thanks for being here. Hope you enjoy uh, the rest of the evening. And Frank, thank you so much for uh, taking the time and uh, to join us. And hopefully you stick around also and and indeed do your uh, do your. Oh, there's Barbara. Uh, do your <laughs> uh, as, uh, induct in the induction of ND. Thank you so much. Well, I appreciate and if I may, I'm going to hang around at least for the wheelchair presentation and uh, cool. Christina's presentation. I'm very interested. Oh. Uh, but you can also learn things on the quiz. 
I'm sure I can. I can. I'm sure I will. <laughs> All right, I'm off. I'm off. Uh, I'm off the camera. All right, thank you, Bruce. Are you uh, uh, like to say something? Sorry, Peter. That was a uh, button in the wrong. Pushed the wrong. Okay. I saw Newton uh, Gray appear and disappear and appear again and disappear again. So I will, uh, if he if he sticks around longer, I will uh, get him to uh, uh, to come forward um, and introduce himself. Which now uh, gives me the pleasure to introduce our guest speaker tonight. And um, I could, uh, uh, as you well know, go on for a long time, and I will not do that because that's not what a presenter is supposed to do. But I have known Christiana Flesner for about eight years now, I think, uh, when I uh, met her through uh, fellow Rotarians in Texas. We went and uh, uh, started working together and have delivered many wheelchairs in many places of the world. And, um, and as such, have, uh, um, you know, really done well with a program that whoever participates in a wheelchair delivery program comes back a changed person. And uh, I'm looking forward to Christiana's presentation and uh, I know you will enjoy it. So Christiana, please uh, turn on your camera and you have the floor with the help of Ali in the background to get your, uh, your media working properly. Welcome to our club and uh, um, looking forward to your presentation. Thank you. Now everybody can see my screen, right? But not me. Let me just see. Bear with me. I see your so, screen. Okay, good. So you see me, right? Okay. <laughs> Great. And everybody, well, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much, Peter. Yeah, lots of good memories. Huh? Um, it's actually really neat to listen everybody introduce themselves. It's almost like every person, when they said from where they are, there's a connection to our program, to the wheelchair program. And by the way, I forgot to mention that I'm actually a German immigrant into Canada. I've lived in Canada in the Vancouver area since 77, so I have my 40th anniversary there. The office is still there, but over the last few years with family in Germany, I hang out in Germany, just like some of you, about a, th a third of the year I spent here. So this is from where I'm logged in right now. And as you can see, I wish I had wine. These are the breakfast cups. <laughs> um, so. But I'm here to speak not about me, about our program, about the wheelchair program. Um, when I, I've presented after Ted Rose a few times about the project Amigo, and I sometimes call this our little program that could. Um, it's a little program that sounds like we just bring, we bring wheelchairs to people who need them and can't afford them. Sounds very simple, but it's so much more than that. Um, in our part of the world, we don't think about wheelchairs much because if you need one, you can get it. Vancouver had a mayor in a wheelchair. We have Rick Hansen in Canada, uh, very active people. Uh, Rick Hansen even sails or goes fishing. Uh, not a problem. He, he's definitely very mobile. But in many parts of the world, if for some reason you become physically disabled, that's it. I've come across many, many young men who've played with guns. <laughs> for example, who've played with guns, they have a spinal cord injury, they shoot themselves into the spine, they end up with a spinal cord injury and cannot move anymore, but that's it. That's, uh, you know, their legs may not work, the lower parts of their body may not work their arms still work, the eyes still work, the heart, the soul, everything else works, but they cannot use that potential. And the wheelchair gives them that ability to use the abilities they have. And that's been the story that I try to tell uh, as I travel. Now, I need water, excuse me. 
It is 1.30 a.m. here. <coughs> um, and so being a Rotarian myself, I've worked a lot with Rotary Clubs. Of course, that's where I started. Um, our, we started as a club project within our own club. Bruce, you're in the neighborhood. <laughs> and, uh, <coughs> and then it just went on and on. People heard about it. We start talking about it. Yes, there are many complex issues around the world. Hunger, uh, sanitation issues, war, landmines, disease, lack of medical care. They are all huge issues and we all need to take care of them. But this is something that is a relatively easy and a quick fix even though we cannot, you know, it's often what I hear men say, you know, oh, this is easy, this is just so straightforward. For me, I come from a business background. Every end of the year, we would decide which, which organization we would like to support and donate to before Christmas. <coughs> Excuse me. We've written many checks in the business, and uh, but you really never knew where the money would exactly go and what the money would do. With our program, it's pretty straight transferable for every donation of $195. We can get a wheelchair out. So the Canadian Wheelchair Foundation started at the end of 2002, so we are 15 years old, and we've just delivered our 40,000th wheelchair in Guatemala, actually. I know there's somebody here. Um, so very exciting. We are, I think it's 39 countries, or 40 or 41 countries now, 40,000 wheelchairs. But we couldn't have done it without Rotary. Rotary has not only been one of our main sponsors, but also for me, being a Rotarian, we all subscribe, we all live the four-way test. Rotary is always the place we go to when we want a reliable partner at the other end. And uh, so that is what we've done. We've connected Rotarians in our part of the world with the Rotarians at the other. We've created a program whereby people like Peter uh, can, we have gone and we make it a hands-on international project. And it's easy because we do all the middle work. The Rotarians raise the funds, we support them with material. Sometimes I come out and speak just like to you here now. And uh, then we make connections and we arrange for the sponsoring Rotarians to meet with the consignee type Rotarians at the other end. And uh, we go and deliver the wheelchairs. We bring them into homes, we go door to door. Every story is different, every life is different. And uh, for me, I love the rotary theme that we had a few years ago, building bridges and connecting, con you know, connecting continents, building communities. And I think that's what all of these programs that we are supporting, like Project Amigo, Ellie, like uh, the volunteer weeks down in Cofradia, you know, that's exactly what all of these programs are doing. We're connecting people to people and uh, people they, people you may not know, you feel comfortable hugging <laughs> or they are comfortable hugging you because you're connecting on a very basic level. Uh, so it's just, it's one of those things, it's a little thing, the wheelchair is a tool to a better life because once people have mobility, uh, in terms of physical mobility, they can, the children can go to school, the adults can go to work, so you create another type of mobility, mobility within your life, within your communities. We've gone, oh, we've, well, so many stories I could go on, but often the, the, the hosting Rotarians are surprised themselves when they go out, they go into homes to, um, to, to assess how many wheelchairs are needed. They go and visit homes 
the most drastic effect like this I had when I received comments from the Philippines, the Manila Rotarians, very active, they're doing lots and I, they thanked us for doing this because they had no clue how drastic the situation was in their own backyard and they were very grateful and actually a couple of surgeries for children came out of it because they, they brought them back into Manila and they did some surgeries for them that they were badly needed. So often the wheelchair project is an easy one. All we need is money <laughs> and we can get the wheelchairs out for you. But many of our first wheelchair projects have been startup projects. I, I work with quite a few Rotary Clubs on an ongoing basis and I've seen them getting it, getting the need, going into the developing, into developing countries and being more comfortable with it and then they see, oh, we're bringing out wheelchairs but there are, there are these kids who can't go to school and by the way, when they go to school, where do they sit? They need benches, they need tables, so all of a sudden tables are being built, a matching grant is applied for, of course now it's a global grant and uh, tables are being built, work weeks are done, or sanitation projects are happening or uh, Bruce, your Rotary Club did a water, they adopted a village in the Cancun area and now this little village has clean water and a school and a road. <laughs> there was no road. Uh, so it's been really exciting. About a third of our wheelchairs go to polio victims, people who've had polio, of course mainly in Africa. So I'm a staunch supporter for vaccinations. I have in our patchwork family, we're up to 12 grandchildren now, and I insist they all get immunized. Um, but that has always been one of my aims, that we need to make sure that we do the polio immunization and also deliver wheelchairs to those people who have had polio. I was hoping to uh, show a video on YouTube Ellie says it may be hard, but I'll try uh, talking about polio and then I'll have some comments after. I don't know. Will my screen disappear? <coughs> I hope my face will disappear when I... I'll try. We will see what you see. Okay, thanks. There we go. Let's see. <coughs> ah, there we go. As you can see, it, we, it is not fluent and there is no sound. No sound? It's one of the problems with playing the videos. Okay. No, we don't want no sound. Then we will do the other, the plan B, the Dropbox, the PowerPoint. Better chance? PowerPoint will work. <coughs> Thank you. I, I had wonderful sound. Let's try this. <clears throat> Is there comment with this? Because we don't hear anything. Christiana, we only see pictures. Okay. Yeah, that is too bad. What am I doing wrong? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not doing anything wrong. It's the limitation of the technology. Yeah, so no sound. sound. Huh? 
so no sound. So if I unhooked you, you should be able to hear the sound through my mic, right? Are you well, able to that's probably the... not very good. You know, can you not just make some comments with the, yeah. with the slides? Yeah. Sure, I can just talk. Then I'll just uh, mute it on my side. If that's okay with everybody, I can just narrate. <clears throat> then I will go back to the Ethiopia. I'll do that. And uh, Peter, will you let me know if you can you hear me while the video is running? Yeah. Yes. Don't worry, I'll tell you. You know that. Oh, okay. I, I know you. I know that, yeah. Okay. Ethiopia. We went that year together with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the Center for Disease Control. I was I was driven to experience the polio NID because I was witnessing in my everyday work life so many people who have had polio. And I joined a group from the Seattle district, District 5030, who goes every year. They are organized by Ezra Teshome. Um, he is from Ethiopia and the former governor of state, Ralph Monroe. Good buddies. Um, we went into the field, far out, divided into groups. But first we started in a home in Menagesha. It's called the Cheshire Home. And what they do is deliver, um, they do the reconstructive surgeries in, for people who have had polio. This is a guy, oh, it's hard to narrate all of this. There's Cheshire Home, lots of children who do the reconstructive surgery to stretch their legs and they can be so that they might be able to walk properly. Lots of polio. This is the former housekeeper of one of the Addis Abeba Rotarians. Some images from the NID, where we in the field, we're just fanning out into groups. There's Ezra, some of you may know him, Ellie, you will know him. And uh, the Hmm, two drops. And some like it and some don't. Um, the advertising campaign, the pink, the purple pinky. Every child, as you most of you will know, every there's Ralph. <laughs> every child that has been immunized receives a per receives a purple pinky to make sure they don't get immunized twice. All children five and younger are immunized. And uh, there's Linda Wenzel from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. They had all, well, there were some do donations from the Joan Ferkins from District 5020. We had the wheelchairs of the bus that went into the field for the NID. And many people speak English. Of course, it said Canadian Wheelchair Foundation. The word wheelchair just created havoc sometimes where we went. And look at that. <laughs> oh, the candle seller. I talk about him later. Again, the Cheshire home, always coming back to that. Full of children. All children who have had polio. I'm a mom of four children. Every single child in there has been affected by polio. And they are brought by their families into the home to be treated. There's, there's Hassan Muhammad Ali. <laughs> Talk about him still after as well. There's me. And some adults were brought into the Cheshire home because it's their beautiful grounds and there's the space. They also provide prosthesis on the side and children. Children are always this, the same, no matter how they look, no matter which language they speak. <coughs> of course, they love the camera. And there we are. Oh, that's too bad. Where am I? There. What turn on my, my mic again? Can you hear me, Peter? Yeah, yeah. I never lost you. 
never lost me. Okay. Oh, that's good. Don't forget me either. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Let's turn that one off. Um, the candle holder. The candle seller in the wheelchair. We were in the Cheshire home. He received, he received his wheelchair one day. The next day was the day of St. Michael's. And we went into town. I took Jeff, the cameraman, with me. We just wanted to film a bit of hero, they call it. <coughs> and there I see one of our red wheelchairs. Now, the Cheshire home is about a 45-minute drive out of Addis Abeba, way into the field. <coughs> this market in front of the church was in Addis Abeba. And there he is in the middle of the road and uh, selling candles. And I went up to him, and luckily one of the rotaractors was along with us. And I said, how did you do this? Yesterday you received your wheelchair, and here you are selling candles. He said, I didn't know this was going to happen. But I was hoping it would happen, and I had a plan. So this young man actually went from being a beggar by the side of the road to a businessman. He had invested, you know, he, somebody had trusted him with the candles. He was selling them. I guess during the service at the, at the, on the day of St. Michael's, you have to read the scriptures through a certain light that these candles provide. There's that. And Hassam Muhammad Ali, the guy with the turban, um, he, he showed us actually one of the images how he moved himself normally. You, you, some of you may have seen it, you know, the withered limbs, the withered legs. And he moved himself a lot with his hands. And when he was in the wheelchair, I asked him what it was that he liked about the wheelchair. What, what do you think about this? Is this good? And, and what is the thing that stands out for you? And uh, I like to ask people right at the beginning. And he, and he went like so, like, he said, now I'm clean. Now I can be clean. And I have hadn't heard that before. I've heard many things before about receiving a wheelchair. I've never heard it again either. <clears throat> but there he was, you know, not and no more in the dust anymore. Yeah. So uh, just got back from Costa Rica, an older lady. She says, I didn't ask her at the time because she was busy with her granddaughter, but she's leaving the little hall where we were doing the wheelchair delivery, and she says, she turns around and she tells to one of the Rotarians, I feel like a bird, and she's just going off, you know. For us, we look at a wheelchair and we think, oh, shucks, this is such, this, is, this restricts me so much. This looks like a prison to me to us we can move freely but for people who have not had mobility the wheelchair is freedom and uh, I had to I wish I could have taped it because if you've seen our logo of course we have the little dove in it and I've seen people take off after they've been able to move and Peter you've seen it it's it's quite something and it's <clears throat> I don't think there are many projects that we can do where the impact of that work that we've done, you can see it right before your eyes and you see that person change right before your eyes. Often people are, they are holding on so tight and family members have to struggle to take care of their loved ones. It takes a lot of effort to stay positive, to stay involved and to, and to feel hopeful. If really you, you know you will not make it out of that room, you will look at that ceiling for the rest of your life. And then you can go outside into the sun and hear the birds. It's quite something. So for people to give that gift of mobility is much bigger than, than I thought at the beginning. I've learned a lot and I, you know, in the end we change everybody's life and in the end we affect our own. And by ch ourselves changing, we change the people around us, the community around us, not just with a wheelchair program, any hands-on project we do. And if it is building a shelter, Bruce, for Atira Women's Shelter, for us in White Rock, you know, 
connecting to the people that we are helping rather than just writing a check. It's really important. And we do both in Rotary Clubs. We have to. Um, many, for you as the district governor, <laughs> Um, coming up, Frank, I find that when people, um, the Rotarians that have gone on international service projects <clears throat> seem to understand the need to support the Rotary Foundation more, and I've watched it. I was annual giving chair in our district. I've seen, I've seen the impact on the clubs and on, on the person and on the whole environment. Uh, but it's really, you know, we can talk about all these different impacts and all the statistics about socioeconomic impact and whatnot, but really it's that one person that receives the wheelchair whose life is not the same, and that's why we're doing it. So, um, oh, my time is up, I guess. <laughs> I get the hook, Peter. But I was wondering if there are any questions. I... Many of you will know the program. You've seen me and my red wheelchairs at district conferences, at the international <laughs> convention as well. I wonder if there are any pro uh, questions. We have, uh, we, have, we have time for two questions. So anybody has a question, please uh, turn on your camera and ask the question, please. <coughs> I have, there's my camera. Yes, beautiful I do, eyes. I do have a question. Actually, one one of the uh, what I'd like to do is is get your contact information. Maybe we can do it a little bit. I have I've heard other uh, presentations on on the wheelchair foundation or wheelchair delivery projects, and and they really are quite passionate and very emotional. And I, you know, when you when you hear from the people that have been involved, and so I'd like to speak with you a little bit more in in, in depth about it, and and we can sure. do that. We can do that kind of off camera. So, yeah, we could we could Skype. Uh, Peter, can you connect us so we could even talk on Absolutely. Skype while I'm still in Absolutely. Germany? If you connect the emails, yeah. Frank, uh, um, Sally, and uh, Tim Shields are great, great, mm -hmm. great, very great supporters. Yeah. Of yes, the they are. Too, so. Yeah, and, and Tim is one. Tim is one of the individuals that I I was referring to. So. Yes. Yeah, I will, and, and I will get you guys in touch. No problem. Any other questions from anybody? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Mm -hmm. One one question I have for you, uh, Christiana, is the the um, over the years we've talked about that and to change the limitations of mentioning wheelchairs to move it on to mobility because there is so much more than just yeah. the wheelchairs. Can you quickly comment on that, please? Well, I find that even the name Canadian Wheelchair Foundation limits us. It's not about wheelchairs. It's about mobility. And uh, it's, a, it's about the education, the going to work. It, it is about socioeconomic impact. The wheelchair is just a tool. And also we provide, we've um, helped put together some global grants already whereby we, we include other mobility aids, the canes, the crutches, the walkers, different types of wheelchairs. We have different tires. We've developed a brand new tire that is thicker but solid with an air insert so it's more comfortable. Um, Peter, you put the pediatric reclining chairs together, the specialized chairs. We like to send them and they actually help get the kids, the children stronger over time so they, there's an impact on their health. And uh, so it, it's, a, it's an amazing project to do a global grant. Um, there, is, there is a sustain, sustainability component inherent in the wheelchair, but it also lends itself to a range for other components to it. Uh, in Indonesia, we did a training of physiotherapists with a global grant that we did with Albertsma. <clears throat> so uh, we're doing one in Swaziland right now, whereby um, a charity in Texas is putting their they're repairing bikes and they're employing dis, um, disadvantaged youth, and they they want to use that concept to put a bike shop together. So. It's quite in that mobility as well. If we're putting people to work by what we do, uh, I, I'd like to change our name down the road, you know, because I, it is more about mobility than just wheelchairs. 
Christiana, on behalf of uh, of the uh, Rotary E Club Canada One, I'd like to thank you very much for uh, staying up so late no, and uh, joining us from Germany. But this being a global pro global club global program, it doesn't matter what time zone you're in. Um, when I did my first wheelchair delivery, um, I had my rotary moment. It was in Lyon in 2007. And since that time, together and with others, I've been able to, uh, to deliver about over 3,000 wheelchairs around the world. When I talk about it, and I do right now, again, I well up. I get emotional, and it is genuine because that's exactly what happens when you deliver a wheelchair and you see the eyes of the people that you give that mobility to. Christiana, thank you again so very much for all you're doing and for uh, coming to our club and present. Thank you. Anytime. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, bye -bye. Thank you. It was a pleasure to hear you. All right, we have still uh, somebody who hasn't introduced himself, and it says, waiting for name 5017. Now, we are all wondering who that is. Could you please uh, turn on your camera and microphone and introduce yourself, waiting for name 500017? If you're there. Well, it doesn't seem to work. I think it's Newton and he comes and goes and uh, I don't see anything happening. So maybe yet before the end of the day, at the end of the program, we are uh, going to get that. So we go to the next segment and that is the Rotary Quiz. Always uh, educational, um, challenging and uh, thanks to Vicky uh, who has volunteered and put one together I will stay quiet because I've seen all the answers and I, I'm not allowed to say anything. But uh, you better, you better get, uh, get ready for some tough questions. Vicky, the floor is yours. Okay, can you see my screen? See yes, me. we can see and we can hear you too. Okay, so here's our first question. Rotary boasts how many members and how many clubs worldwide? How are we going to do? Are we going to do the answers all at the end? People have to write in the answers, right? You have to do it. I, I think because of the time and the whole thing, to to do them because I know how you set up your uh, your PowerPoint. So maybe we should just. Uh, uh, we have no prizes for any winners anyway because I took all the prizes at the last time, so there's none available. But those that know the answers may just. Uh, you let us know. I'm not recording anything to write it down. Well, I, ah. I talked about how many clubs there were in the uh, in uh, Undina's uh, induction. Oh, something. So you must have got the answer. Thirty-six thousand. Uh -oh. <laughs> Thirty-six thousand. Thirty-five. Yeah. Oh. So we have. Oops. No. Go back. Go back. Go back. We don't want to go there yet. We want to go here. So the first see one the is answer. how many members? 1.2 million. More than 1 million? 1.2 million. 1.2 million. More than 35,000 clubs. Well, Bruce was pretty close. More than 1 million. That's pretty open to anything, isn't it? <laughs> Bruce <was pretty> positive. <laughs> okay. Question number two. How many children have been immunized by polio? Polio. I don't know. Nine. No idea. I can be no? smart. Okay. I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> Is there a get... smart person here? Who's the smart person? Thank of course. That is homework. 2.5 billion. Oh. Billion. Yes. 2.5 billion. Are we ready? I'm trying to. I'm trying to do this so you only see one thing at a time. 
How many children in the world are illiterate? Yours truly there in the picture. A lot. Not seeing any answers coming up. Are you giving them verbally or? They're not giving any answers. I don't have an answer. Three less than last year. <laughs> Who says three less than last year? Well, one million. <laughs> oh, no, no, it's more than that. Uh, 122 million. Wow. Can you see that on the screen? That's a lot. Right. Huge. Uh, I'm okay. going to say 100 million. Yep, I think we're about wrong. Okay, next question. What is the Guatemalan literacy program's main focus? We don't see that. Education. Okay, there it is, yes. Remember, remember, Vicky, there's a lag, okay? There is a lag between your screen okay. and our screen. Okay, can you see this yet? Yes. Okay, what's the Guatemala Literacy Program's main focus? We got Ellie, education. We got Bruce, more literacy. <laughs> Both very oh, good answers. What class did he go to? <laughs> I don't know. Getting textbooks into the hands of students and training teachers. We're not getting too many winners on this. No. Okay, question number five. What are Rotor Rotary's six main causes? I expect winners are from everyone on this one. Oh, we got somebody typing fast. I can hear it. No, I don't see anything coming up yet. Oh, hungry Rotarians. What, feeding them, Bruce? <laughs> Literacy? Okay. Anybody else? Water, sanitation, education, peace, hunger. That's one, two, three, four, five. Ellie, you got a sixth one? <laughs> well, <clears throat> peace and peace. Health. Conflict uh, okay. prevention and resolution. Okay. Need to associate with other hungry <laughs> Rotarians. <laughs> I don't know. I think Bruce is going to get right. the prize here. He yeah, gets the, he'll get the booby prize. That's for sure. <laughs> Okay, there they are. Fighting disease, growing local communities, peace, providing clean water, saving mothers and children. Nobody answered that one. Support education. Okay? And, and Next question. Just to, I want to just give an aside because of what Christiana was just saying that, you know, when we apply for global grants, they want you to know for which main cause it is for. Wheelchairs mm. affect all six of them, even though Rotary International mm -hmm doesn't necessarily see that or know that or realize that but that's my my passion part on that as well we'll talk more about that in Atlanta but it, it affects mm -hmm. all all things just think about that when right. people can sorry about that I could couldn't resist no that's okay okay Next. what are the two oops where's that two most important places that rotary needs to promote peace Mm, this is a tough one. I'm not seeing any answers on this one. Are you looking for a country or an area? Oh, you have to figure that out yourself. Two most important places. <laughs> oh, we got one in well, the Middle East. Ellie says at home and at school. Terrestrial <laughs> <laughs> and extraterrestrial. Here's what, Bruce, what are you drinking? <laughs> I think it's. I think he's had an IV in all day long. <laughs> My father-in-law told me about this friend he had when he retired. He strung a hammock up and an IV thing full of rum, and he laid in his hammock and let it drip into his mouth. You want to guess how he died? Liver <laughs> You got it. 
Okay, the two most important places that Rotary needs to promote peace, inside the club and outside the club. So that leaves nothing undone, right? <clears throat> and inside the club, I think, is the most important. Okay, who can join Rotary? Bruce, I don't see your picture on there. <laughs> According to Bruce, that will be extraterrestrials too, I guess. But yeah. <laughs> A lot of us fit in that category. Okay, we got any answers? Okay, we got business and professional people. Everyone above drinking age. Well, that eliminates you, Bruce. <laughs> Anybody else? Going once, going twice. Oh, I hear somebody typing, waiting for another answer. Coming? No? Anyone with a worthy profession, integrity, and a willing to serve? Ooh, that's a pretty good answer, Ellie. Let's go see what we got here. People who want to give back to their communities. So that covers a lot of. <coughs> Name the locations of the okay, six sorry. rotary pieces. I, missed, I missed the answer. What was the answer? Anybody, people who want to give back to their communities. I th isn't it people that need to be invited? Only those that are invited can join? Right, but you can invite somebody who doesn't want to give back to their community, so do we really want them in Rotary? Okay. Well, so they've got to first have a heart to serve. But you're right, that's the second step. So okay. there, Barbara put it in there, just about anyone with a heart for service. So that was a good answer. And, okay. Number eight, name the locations of the six Rotary Peace Centers. I just want you to know all this information was new to me. <laughs> oh, we got one Bangkok. That's one. Evanston. Evanston is where, Bruce? Slow connection. Ooh, I hope it will lose you guys. Okay, we got two answers. Nobody else? Are you ready? Oh, Illinois. Evanston, Illinois. Jerusalem. We got a third one. We'll see if they're right in a minute. Anybody else? Ah, uh, North England, can't remember the name of the university. Ooh, good one, David. Hull? Oh, I don't think so. Anyway, are we ready? Let's go for, oops, what happened there? We don't want to do that. Escape, and we want to go here, and here they are. Duke University, North Carolina. United Kingdom, I think it's in Leeds, but I couldn't really tell. Scroll Maybe. up a bit, we can't see it. Bangkok? Okay. Oh, okay. Oh. It's Leeds. It is Leeds? Okay, we'll take that question. Uh, thought, Sweden? Yeah, I thought probably Leeds, yeah. yeah. Sweden? Is I couldn't find University it. of Uppsala, I think, isn't it, in Sweden? Uh, Maybe. Uh, I couldn't sure. find it on the, on the map. It was specific. Bangkok, Tokyo, and Brisbane. Okay, next one. Can you see the screen yet? Yes. This should be easy. What are the dates of this year's Rotary Convention? <laughs> I believe it's June June 8th to the 10th. Yes. <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll be late. And I'll yes, be I late am. for the convention. <laughs> Me too. That's when I arrive on the 10th. <laughs> You're coming for the, for the after party. No. <laughs> Ellie's got it. The June 10th to the 13th. Not 10th to the 13th. 14th. That's right. I'm, I'm leaving here on the 8th. 14th. Oh, Ellie, you got it's in there. 14th, the Wednesday. Yeah. Right. Okay. Next question. Awesome. 
Awesome. This year's Rotary International Convention will be complete. Will complete how many annual conventions? And if you can read Korean, then you know the answer. It's right there. Uh, cool. Well, an estimation doesn't work, Ellie. We're looking for a specific number. Mm, close, but no cigar, John K. 85? David, you're sleeping. One more answer? Anybody there? Oh, that's good, Ellie. What does that mean? <laughs> I didn't that's know you could, She's but, copying. She's copying. Not but completely, though. Out of 10, you're over the estimate. Okay, answer? Are you ready for the answer? 108. Okay, next question. John is only one out. Yeah, but the, okay. This is the last the question, I think. Who will be what? Who will be the keynote speaker at the Rotary International Convention in Atlanta? Oh, you got it, Ellie. Okay, the, the prize goes to Ellie because she got the last answer, the fastest. But I thought it was Jack Nicholas. Well, he's uh, doing the lead in act. <laughs> no, I don't know. Okay, that's he, it he for our quiz. Approach? He does the approach? <laughs> no, I think he's, he's the. Uh, oh, he's the, one, of the, one of the featured speakers. He's the pitch man. <laughs> Okay, that's it for our quiz. Thank you very much for joining us, and I hope you learned something because I learned a lot of new things here. I learned a lot. So, good. Thank you. Okay, you can take my screen away. You do that. Okay, Ali, the floor is yours. Ah, thank you. Thank you, Vicky. Uh, we need You're to welcome. do our homework, you know. We need to study a little <laughs> often and uh, do because... I'm I'm just relaxing. I I used to be the encyclopedia of of Rotary, and um, I missed a lot of the answers. So that's uh, that's now Frank's job. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank, you thank, you thank you for doing that, Vicky. We hope that for the month of May, somebody will come forward and do another quiz, and uh, we will let you know um, soon what our program is for the April something, third Tuesday of April Fellowship Assembly. And um, we encourage you all to uh, participate and to join us. And uh, maybe if you haven't done your classification talk yet, that would be a really good opportunity to, to do that. We look forward to that. Uh, thank you, Peter, for my partner in crime. Uh, I need to do a lot of catching up with uh, Bruce here because I've been drinking uh, just water. And um, have a great week, everyone. And well, like to uh, next month. Thank you so much for the invitation. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Frank and Barb. And uh, we won't see you in Westlock, but uh, we'll see you in Atlanta. Absolutely. Okay. Good night, Good everybody. Morning. Thank you. Good night. All right. Good night, all. Good night. Thank you.